later this afternoon we'll have this side event under the title is is the is the window for red closing and then we'll be looking back on a research project over the past four years five years that started in the the bali cop um, and we're looking at to what extent the the issues as as five years ago we identified what are the challenges uh, have we made progress yes or no we've looked more specifically at indonesia vietnam cameroon and peru as as representing a wide range of conditions and my own work has been mostly in Indonesia and, and on that front we can say well there were five big challenges that we saw five years ago yeah, issues of what do we actually mean by forest and everyone is happy about forest but if you ask them is a plantation a forest yes or no is, is oil palm a tree and is an oil palm plantation a forest yes or no we've had many we have been able to come up with a, a close <laughs> close front on that front and, and from that perspective everyone is trying to protect their own forest. So is it fair to say that Red would have been more successful if those initial criteria, those initial definitions would have been better defined if people knew when you said what is a forest, right. we knew from the beginning what, what a forest was? Well, uh, we, we tried to get that debate going five years ago and, and it has been picked up at a number of levels and people realize that, that but it has not been. <laughs> and so our, our perspective now is that with a more landscape-based approach, we can actually dodge the issue. Yeah? And the trees that farmers manage in their own farms, then we don't need to say, is that forest or not forest? Because in a country like Indonesia, forest is first of all a political institutional term. It is the domain of forestry organizations. It is not about trees and tree cover. And in a country like Indonesia, actually tree cover has no relation with whether it is formally forest or non-forest. So if we talk about reducing emissions, we need to know, so we need to know the trees and not the forest, so to speak. Yeah? Um, and I think RED from its start was conceived within a forest institutional frame and we can only solve it if we have a landscape based approach, if we explicitly bring in agriculture and forestry, if we solve it in that broader frame. And in a country like Indonesia, that is actually happening right now because of the, yeah, the nationally appropriate mitigation action, the commitment of the president to reduce emissions from Indonesia, regardless of whether it is forest or peat or agriculture or whatnot. So we need a bottom line commitment and then we can, we no longer depend on these issues, is it a forest or not. Right. And then with that bottom line commitment is red, can it still be effective in the future? We think as, as long as we see it as part of that NAMA, as part of that land-based part, as sort of a broader bubble, then, then it can. Now, the second issue we talked about was peat, and is peat a forest or not? Well, we don't need to know. It is emissions, and we need to hand manage it jointly. Now, the third issue was about tenure and rights, and, and that is a big challenge in Indonesia for formal forest. Um, and we need to go to local government, and, and governments deal with people and livelihoods and economics and, and also with forest. And so I think the framing of RED as if we can deal with forestry organizations and they can reduce emissions, I think it, that was wrong. Yeah? But there is a lot of things happening with trees and landscape and people and, and we can find new formats at landscape level that again Indonesia is, is the pioneer of and if we see RED as part of that bigger NAMA nationally appropriate mitigation action then a country like Indonesia can, can develop pride that they actually do things themselves and it is not waiting for money and doing something, it is actually taking things in your own hands. So if, if we analyze the, the motivations, where do people come from, yeah, then we do see that NAMA actually as, as the way forward and, and that's what we'll try to in more detail discuss this afternoon and, and see where that that's yeah, it, in that way, so the, the window for RED as a specific narrow market-based thing is closing that, and that's not not going to happen right. I mean, are you confident is it possible that uh, some of these issues might could be resolved here in, in doha or is it a, a much more long-term you know, more long-term negotiations well i'm afraid it is a, a longer term issue in the sense that without deep commitments to emission reduction the market-based thing is not going to work in the first place so so that that's not flying and and, and it doesn't look as if Doha will make be the breakthrough on that front. And that it is about countries like Indonesia taking things in their own hand and moving forward on that and not waiting for others and not waiting for the money 
from outside, but saying, well, we don't want to be known as, as a big polluter in the world. We want a clean image for our country, and we're, we're willing to take that on head. That's very positive, and, and, and we hope that, that other countries can get some inspiration from the ways Indonesia has been handling that. And, and well, I've, I've been involved with that discussion over the past five years. Uh, it started when this COP in Bali started, and, and the whole process that at that point in time was a small group of people talking about it is now much wider spread. And, and, and in that sense, I, I am an optimist that, yeah, in the end, things will, will work their way. Don't expect a single COP in Doha to be the breakthrough, but hopefully we we'll, we'll can make some further steps. And, and, and we're here to share the experience from our work and, and share it and, and hopefully help the inspiration that the country like Indonesia can give to for others to, to pick up on that. But RED was framed as it is just about money and as long as we pay for it then we'll keep the forest and, and, and that's not proven that, that that it can't work that way. It has to be a much deeper issue of motivation. We need to look much deeper at what institutions can work and can balance livelihoods and economic perspectives for poor people living in forest margins and yet solve environmental issues. And, and of course the forest is much more than the carbon and forest climate is much more than carbon related part. So we had, I would say, the wrong specific focus in red and we need to put it as part of this wider framing and, and then we can make progress again.